Well, good afternoon, folks. It's the weekend. Well, okay, it's Friday, but basically the start of the weekend, whatever, it doesn't really matter. And we are back with, as I said, we are not, well, I don't really want to do any more uh, train live streams until I finish building this airfix Spitfire, which we got to, um, I think, we finished on Sunday. Was there a live stream on Sunday? 
I can't quite remember. But anyway, last live stream we'd got this far. In fact, I've actually taken a bit off. I've taken the cockpit piece uh, off the Spitfire, which was glued on there, but before it's set, I pulled it back off again, because uh, I've decided that this Spitfire, although, as stated on the box, although it is 1-72, to I think it's close enough to double O, uh, 1 one to 76 to, uh, to put on the layout. So I am going to find somewhere for the Spitfire on the layout, and I want to make it disused, so I have got some fabric from God knows where in my drawer. Um, and when it's all painted, I will then stick this cover back on, and I will put like a cockpit and canopy cover over the top to make it look like it's just been packed up and disused. Um, I will might even just stick it you know, in the back corner of the layout out of the way, to be honest. I've got a nice little space at the back of the coal yard it might fit for. So that's why the cockpit's come off, um, and that's uh, where this is going to be going in that corner, I think. And that's why um, the cockpit's come off as well. I just noticed there's a bit of muck on here. We may repaint this propeller today, actually. Uh, but that's where it's going to be going um, and I'm going to make it look disused so that's why I've taken this off so I can freely paint around there stick this on and then work the bit of fabric around the cockpit area um, to you know put a cockpit cover on I've got some fabric some grey fabric in the drawer which should do nicely so today we are going to continue on building the Spitfire we got to gluing everything in uh, on this instruction page last time uh, all we need to do is paint the, uh, is it the underside of the wings let me just check. Oh no, we uh, neglected to do that. I didn't realise before you glue that to there and that to there, you're supposed to paint the underside of the wings so you don't just have blue through there. But because this Spitfire is going to be sat permanently down, that's not going to be such a consequential mistake. So, we are, dare I say it, oh we might touch up the black on the exhausts, but we are, dare I say it, finished with uh, instruction number four now, which means going on to the correct side of the page. And number five, which means putting the wheels on. And before somebody reminds me, and I'm sure if Joe from Northern Transport was here, he would uh, most definitely be reminding me right now. Before I get too stuck in and forget to play the intro, here's the intro. Do enjoy the stream, and I'll see you all in about 13 seconds. Do enjoy, everyone. And so we shall crack on. Pete says, oh, by the way, welcome, Pete. I know I've uh, spoke to you in the chat. I haven't spoke to you directly. So hello, Pete. Thank you for joining. Uh, yes, the fun and games certainly will warm me up as well, as well as inhaling slightly more cabaretta spray than you're probably supposed to while I try and get these chuffing paints to work. Uh, but on the instructions, number five is saying the question mark, I've remembered, I'm learning, uh, means there's an option of parts. So we can either model the Spitfire with the wing, uh, sorry, with the wings, with the landing gear folded up, so as if you're going to like hang it from a piece of string and have it flying, or it looks like you can uh, model the landing gear uh, as being down. Uh, where the hell does the wheel go for that? Oh, right, because the, the thing's upside down, so that's where it mounts and the wheel sticks in there. Okay, so because, as I've said, it's going to be sat in a corner looking disused, obviously we, we want to model the landing gear. Um, if you'd, I suppose if we'd have been putting the landing gear as being stowed like that, it wouldn't have mattered that we had to paint with that, but we're not going to see it because it's going to be sat like that anyway. Um, so we need A11 and 33, and the corresponding parts... Oh, no, that's the paint colour is 33, I remember. Oh, yes, it shows here, look. So it shows that once you've glued that part in, then in the next step you put the wheels on. Okay, so that makes sense. So, step five. We can ignore the stowed ones, so we don't need to worry about that. Right. Do I touch the... Uh, oh, no, the exhausts don't need touching up, actually. That's quite fortunate. So let's just bend this out of the way. And hopefully you can somewhat read that from there when the exposure settles down yes there we go especially when you bring my copper i know it looks brown it's copper color put it on right so we need the slightly oversized snips as i feel obliged to mention every stream that i broke my other small ones so we can only use the big ones uh, so now we, to model the landing gear being deployed uh, well the, the, in the assembly this is actually uh, upside down is the spitfire so to model it being upside down, we need sprue number A, 
Sorry, screw letter A, number A. Dear me. I think that's twice I've made that mistake now on stream. So we need A11 and A12, which is this bit here. So let's just go snip. And you know, we'll just lop that big bit off at the bottom there. And then we can oik all this out in one. Oik, I meant hike. So that's A11 and 12 joined together. In fact, because there is quite a lot of pieces going on here, I shall do the sensible thing and stick and paint them uh, one at a time. Right, let's trim these down with the really oversized snips. And I've just got a pile of plastic at the side of my computer now. So that's A11. Oh, I've actually just chucked the other one over here. I forgot to snip it. Right, let's get you out. If possible. Yeah, they, they've actually come out fairly easily. That's A11 and A12. We don't need the wheels until the next step, so that's fine. So if I place those on the piece of paper up there, it will remind me. Where. In fact, this exposure is sort of going slightly mad, so if you give me a second, I'll try and tone it down a little bit. Just because this camera appears really yellowy, unless you mess with some of the exposure settings uh, in OBS, like everything looks really yellow and orange, but obviously everything's going a little bit haywire. Yeah, let me just take my hands out of the way. Yeah, that's not too bright. Right, so that's that. We need A7, which is some sort of underwing gun. Is it a gun or is it a fuel tank? I can't tell. Jaden needs to turn up, then he can tell me what everything is, because I am not an aviation nerd. Nor am I really a train nerd, to be honest. I don't know that much, really. So A7, B20, in fact, no, let's do all the A's. A3, which looks like some other detailing part. Nip. That one doesn't need tidying up, but I shall tidy these up as I go. Oh, I remember. Where's the knife? Oh, oh yeah, great. All the bits have just fallen off. Right, let's not do that again. Stay. Where's the knife? Here we go. I remember, instead of using the oversized snips, it has been a week since I do this, I just very carefully go, chink, like that, with the knife. And that does uh, get, it up, get it cleaned up quite nicely. Blade looks slightly rusty. I best not cut myself with it or I'll get tetanus. Try it on the sharp bit. There, that's nice and clean. That's A3. Have we got any more A parts from that diagram? No. Good. Right, that's sprue A. Uh, let's chuck that over there. Ooh. An avalanche over the other side of the room. I just realized I will need these snips. So now we need B33, which is this honking. Well, it's probably the biggest part we're going to put together. Oh, oh this that that, ooh, that was quite nice. That just twisted off actually. Uh, oh, no, 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 we're doing well. No cleaning. I've just realized I keep throwing bits all over the diagram. That's B23. Now we need B28, which is the tail gear. B28, well, the rear uh, landing thing in Bob. Yeah, the rear landing gear, the rear wheel. That's quite a satisfying noise. Don't know if you can hear that. It wasn't registering on OBS. Um, oh, for. That's. I've just fired that across the room and I've no clue where it is. Oh, you wally. I should have known that was going to happen. Oh, there's a fuse in that one. Um, I've just fired the. Oh, for crying out loud. That could be a problem. Uh, mm, uh, can I really? Mm. 
Yes, we'll switch to the other camera. This uh, camera's just gonna have to move out of the way for a minute. I've just fired that uh, thing out of my hand. Oh, that could be anywhere. I reckon that's gone all the way down behind my. Uh... Oh! That's gone right down the back of the boards, is that? I can't get to that. Never mind, I'll find that later. Oh dear. Bad move, you don't say. Right, let's get uh, the camera back. Yeah, that wasn't uh, the most cleverest thing to do. Anyway, we'll gloss over that and I'll find it later if I remember. Uh, it's easy to get to paint, so you don't have to paint the end of it black anyway. Never mind, we'll find that later. I heard where it went. It went. It shot off and has gone down the back of those drawers, but it was quite a small that. But anyway, I'll uh, look for that later. Never mind. Well, yeah. Do mind, but I'll mind later. Uh, what else do we need? B20, and I shall be more careful with this. Oh, that is a tiny part. Will that just snap off? I really doubt I can get the snips in there without damaging it. Let's try uh, gently cutting through it. Hey, there we go. Jaden's here from on the main line. Thank you very much for joining. Nice to see you. Oh, Jaden, if you just wind back about 30 seconds, I've just fired a tail, the tail wheel uh, off this Spitfire across the room, and I don't know where it's gone. And I am going to probably have to make a load of loud grunting noises on stream as I clamber underneath my very cramped baseboards and search for it. I think I know where it went. It went down the back of his storage drawers. But uh, finding it, it's so small, could be a different matter altogether. My king's back. Thank you very much for joining. Nice to see you. I did read out your comment. I think I did. Yes, I did. You said bad mood, didn't you? I really should have ordered some smaller snips this week. Because they'd have been here from, well, CPC, I think I got my last ones from. B20. That looks like a gun. Of some description. Um, yeah, they'd have been here this week. They'd have been here for the stream if I... Um, They'd have been here if I'd have ordered them earlier this week for this stream. Uh, I think that's everything, is it not? B27, B23, B28, which is down the back of the layout somewhere. Yeah, I think I think we've got everything. Right. The King has an 08 Shunter, Hornby one. Nice. I haven't got a Hornby 08 Shunter, although they do look nice, if not expensive. I think I've got my Backman one, the green with the wasp stripes for... Uh, what was it? Something like £60 second hand from Hattons. Quite good. Uh, 47 and 125. Nice. I've got a bird in uh, 125 as well. Right. If you'll excuse me, I'm going to go very briefly and not for long because you will just get bored to death of me groaning as I try and clamber under the boards. I'm going to try and find the tail wheel, tail wheel for this Spitfire. If not, I may just have to bodge some out of some spare plastic. But I um, know if you can still hear me, you should be able to. I've got the microphone. I'm going to do a quick search behind the boards, although, oh, oh dear, there's a, oh, there's all sorts back here, there's a knackered red LED, half a grinding wheel, <laughs> I don't think it's back here, there's all my, no, I can't see it being back here, because it made a noise like it dropped onto wood. No, it's not behind there. Oh dear. Spit fired it. You're not you're not joking. Oh sorry, you don't say. Sorry, that was the wrong thing to use. Um Oh How much no. Hang on. I think I can move the workbench out of the way. Let's move the workbench out of the way. Diddle -da -da -da. It's on wheels! Right. This is rather in but Oh, I've found it! No, I haven't. No, oh, that's just a random bit of plastic. Um, if I try and split my storage drawers apart, I might be able to see it. 
another random bit of plastic there. God knows what that's from. You know, I don't think I'm going to find this, do you? Excuse me. Oh no, I can't get round there. The beam's in the way. No. I can't find it. I'll probably find it in three years' time. Never mind. I can't see it. Just have a quick look on the boards. No. It could be anywhere. That's annoying. I thought I had found it, but it was just a random scrap of plastic. Oh, well. Hello, Real George. Good afternoon. Ah! My knee! Oh, now I've got the chair stuck on the board. Ah! I'm stuck. I'm not stuck. Oh, that's a pain. Mind you, it's going to be right at the back of the I keep making excuses saying, oh, yes, it'll be fine. It'll be at the back of the layout. It won't be fine, but it'll have to be. Oh, my knees. And now I'm stuck on something else now. Stop it. Oh. Let me look through the scrap bit. What? I need to move one out of the way. Have I got a scrap bit of plastic that will do? Answer, probably not. Yeah, I am not going to find that. It could be anywhere, and it's tiny. And I don't actually know. I thought it had gone behind the board, but it hasn't. That's annoying. Well, what can you do? So it, what? So it's now just going to be a flat Spitfire sat like that? Hmm, that's not great, is it? Um... I'm just looking at what excess bits of sprue I've got to see if I can... That's quite annoying that I've just fired that. Uh, I'm just looking at what scrap bits of sprue I could use to try and sort of fake one. Probably not going to be able to. And Lee from Onfield Roads joined. Thank you very much for joining. And Evan Terry as well. Thank you both. Good to see you. Right. Hmm. Right, I'll just carry on, pretend that didn't happen, and then think of something at a later date. Right, we can uh, get... Um, is it best to paint stuff? Yes, it probably is. Right, let's paint the wheels. Oops. Right, now we have to do my bodge. Oh, okay. The paint's gone a bit mad again. Now, if you've not joined before, you know that this paint isn't very good. And you also know that I don't have any more. So, the fix, would you believe, I've found to work He's putting carburetor cleaner in... Oh, that's just gone all over my hand. Uh, he's putting carburetor cleaner into the paint, which then dissolves it slightly enough to use as paint. So, um... We are back once again putting carburetor cleaner in black paint. Uh, is black the only colour we need? Yes, thankfully. Right, we've just got to wait for... Oh, by the way, I found the correct brush. Uh, I thought I'd accidentally chucked the Airfix brush, but no, this is the original brush that came in the kit. Um, the red one, which I was using, is now completely knackered and covered in coal dust from when I did that wagon video the other day. So, if I can get this open without spilling white spirit everywhere, uh, we have actually now got the proper, correct Airfix, Airfix, Airfix brush. So, uh, we should be able to paint a great deal more accurately than we did. And it's not glued up at the end, that's always a bonus. So, let's get painting and I'll think about how I'm going to make a replacement Spitfire back wheel. Agitate this a bit. Right. You see, that does work. Surprisingly, carburetor cleaner works. 
Right, I think I shall just paint the base. Because if I paint the base, let it dry, stick it in, and I can paint the top bit while it's on it, and then that means I don't have to try and prop these up uh, in an awkward position while they're dry. So, uh, oh, that, this still needs cleaning up. I've missed this bit here. Just nip that off. Snip. So I'm going to paint the base just enough so I can stick it in and then paint. I can paint it when it's stuck in. So that's good. Right, so this just wants painting, uh, the old front of this wants painting black. Then Terry's had mock exams all week. Not for another. See, you, see you, you mock me for using carburetor cleaner to make knackered coagulated paint work, but I am sorry, is that or is that not turning black? Thank you very much. It does work, albeit it's completely unorthodox, but when did that ever stop me? So now, I'm just going to try and... Uh, test that there. I'll do the other one the exact same method. Fortunately, this paint does seem to give quite good colour. Well, depth, I guess, even though you've put very little on. So, you know, it's not actually... Too bad, even though it's very watery and carburetic cleanly. And uh, the propeller doesn't seem to have any problems since it was painted. In fact, I think I will paint the pro Oh, that's just uh, flipped over. And I will paint the propeller again today, I think, just to get it looking really nice. Oops. This, this piece isn't wanting to be here, is it? No. Stay. There you go. Uh, right, what else have we got to paint black? Nothing? Really? So you made me get paint out just for those two tiny pieces? Right, fine. I'll get this dunked in the white spirit. Uh, oh no, because we need to. Put, I'll just leave this bush. It's not going to dry out in that short of time. Let's move that out of the way before I knock it out of the way. Um, right, get my hands clean. Oh, paint. And now it's time for my favourite new discovery, Poly Cement, which is a fantastic glue, as I say, every week. Well, every one of these streams. Right, so let's do the ooking massive bit, although it's not ooking massive, but it's ooking massive for what, it, what this scale. Uh, the... Ooh. Oh, God's green earth. Does that fit in place? Does it just sit on top of it? That's not very good, is it? That goes that way. It's not very clear. Oh, right, because of... Yeah, it's not very clear. So that sits rather nicely in those two slots. Uh, where are we looking? Those two slots there. That sits rather nicely in those two. It made it look like it was supposed to span across those and that little hole there, but uh, no, it doesn't. So that sits there. Apparently. And the entire underside of the Spitfire is the same colour, so that doesn't that means I don't have to worry about blobbing, you know, trying to get in that gap. Thank you. Uh, I don't know if I've read that comment, Pete. Thank you very much. It's uh, it's coming along nicely, apart from the fact I've just pinged a wheel across the room. Yeah. I'm going to try and use as least of this glue as possible. I want to save this because. Um, I'm thinking, because I am actually supposed to be installing some pickups in a wagon. Uh, you've probably seen part one. In fact, it's part one's doing quite well. People seem to have enjoyed it. Um, but I'm, I, I, I haven't got... I've got the connectors came today, the two-pin connectors. Um, but I could really do with waiting for my granddad to bring my Araldite back. However, because this... Um, this poly cement is quite strong and does sit um, quite well. I'm, I might test gluing the pickups to the wagon with this. It does say for plastic model kits only, but I do just want to test how well it will stick copper uh, like this to plastic, because if it works well, it sets fast and it's really strong stuff. So I might try using this. Uh, I have think I think I've decided I'm not going to try and reuse these copper pickups. I've actually got some uh, solid copper wire downstairs left over from when we rewired the loft and moved the isolator to the entrance of the loft. 
Uh, I've decided I'm not going to try and use these because these are really sharp on the edges and they're just scratchy if they're not perfectly set up. So I've actually got some round smooth copper wire downstairs. I think it's 1.5 mil. Um, oh no, so I think it's one millimeter squared copper wire downstairs from the earth that's used to wire all the sockets in this lot. So I'm actually going to use that instead of these. So I do just want to test before, I'm, oh, before I make that video if this will actually glue um, metal to plastic, copper to plastic. Um, it should do. I mean, it's the copper. The the copper isn't going to be under any strain. You know, it's just going to be like rubbing against the side of some wheels. But I just, if it will stick it and just hold it in place as like a retainer, then that might be quite good to use. Anyway, stop waffling. Start gluing. Oh, we've missed a piece. C thirty six, which is spruce C. The black uh, circle there means it's a crystal part. This camera is slightly wonky. There we go. In fact, come over here. Yeah, you can see what I'm doing now. Uh, this is a very small part. Jesus, that is a small part. I can't even see that, barely. So there's a small beacon of some sort underneath. Thank God that's come off easily. That is what we're supposed to glue on. That is ridiculously small. Which way is it supposed to go round? That way. Gordon Bennett, that's ridiculously small. Right, I'm going to get that glued on and then forget about it. In fact, whoops, I'm going to put some glue on the end of the tweezers and poke the tweezers in that hole because I will just end up with glue everywhere otherwise. So if I do that on the tweezer and then poke the tweezers in that hole and then don't click the tweezers together because then I'll just get... Uh, <laughs> I'll just get them stuck together. Let's wipe those off. Before that sets, get this borderline stupid part. Oh, it's just dropped here. Yeah, never mind what it would. Right, so if I get it the right way up on the wings. Oh my god. Is that the right way up? Yes. This is ridiculously small. Who's this Gordon Bennett guy and what did he do? I don't know, but it's a Yorkshire saying and I like using it very much. Hey, we've got the beacon in. Well, I'm sorry, but that's stupid because you put the like the little beacon thing in, but then you're just going to end up painting over it. I mean, even on the box. Look, even on the box there. The show this has been clear, but they just so somebody's gone oh, just goes on and spray, painted straight over that. Why have they included that? That is ridiculous. Look, you can't even tell it's there. Why have the? That's a little bit. I know Airfix is about well, it's not accurate when I'm building, obviously, because I just fire bits across the room. But why have they made that so small? That's borderline stupid, is that? If you ask me. Because obviously, yes, I'm an experienced model builder. <laughs> anyway, we'll gloss over that. That sits, you know, again, in a nice little groove there. Little bit of glue. Whack that in there. Oh, yes, and mush the glue all over the rest of the body. Great. That's gone all right, actually. In fact, I'm not going to need my snips, so if I balance it like, let me think about this, like that, then the trafella is probably not going to get in the way as much. No, it's best doing it crossways like that. Right. What else? A7, done. B20, again a stupidly small part, it goes like that. Airfix are hard to make. Yeah, this is my first one. I'm not doing all that well, am I? Um, that goes in the very last square, so I'm just going to hold this on here and just do that, to be honest with you. Like that. Keep the lid handy. Just try and... Well, that's actually gone in. That actually, that actually went in its little hole quite well. There we go. Uh, I keep forgetting how to align stuff on that little thing pit there we've just glued in that's gone in well what parts have we got left a3 
Now which has handily got a little locating tab on the bottom of it. Goes with the small end facing back. That does it or does it not drop? Yes, that does drop in there. Very nice. Right, so let's get some glue on the recessed little plug thing. I haven't built any Lego kits in a long while. I've got some on my windowsill downstairs now. There. No, and I've just stuck my finger in that glue. Never mind. Uh, that goes on there. What else have we got? Can't do the tail wheel because I broke it. Well, I haven't broke it. I fired it across the side of the room. Ah, yes, the... Uh, yeah, that, this paint's almost dry. Look, that's incredible. I did say it was fast drying, though, didn't I? So, this one. Does it or does it not? I need to work out which one's which now. Right, so the small bit goes to the back and they face inwards. So that's the small. So this is the one that goes on this side. And, to use my favourite phrase, does it or does it not just stick in there like that? Yes. Yes, it does. Well. Get some glue on there. Stick that in there. Get it somewhat straight. Let's just check the diagram at the bottom. So it should tilt ever so slightly outwards. It's not quite gone in the peg, to be honest. Oh, it has. It has now. There we go, that's gone in. Do the other one. Uh, McKing says, how is your layout? Uh, I'm going to be in queue this weekend. It is confirmed. My lovely mother is taking me. I don't know why I say mother. I say mum normally, but do I do it to sound posh on the stream? Probably. Uh, yeah, my mum is taking me this weekend to be in queue to get some foam. So that means, with any luck, this weekend or the week after, so I have homework and the like to do, um, hopefully... That means that very, very shortly, I will get landscaping at Highbrook End, which is very exciting prospect indeed. So yes, this weekend, possibly next, landscaping will begin on Highbrook End, which I am very excited to do. I'm sure you are. We finally, after all these years of saying, yes, I'll do some scenery, oh yes, I'll do some scenery. Um, yeah, finally, uh, we are... Or, I should say, I am getting some scenery done. So, yeah, nothing's changed since last time. Uh, but very, very soon, this weekend even, we will be doing some scenery, which I'm very excited to do. Already got my hot wire foam cutter tested. I've got the uh, I've got some replacement filament for it as well, because the reel I had has gone walkies somewhere. Uh, so yeah, right. So apart from manufacturing a tail wheel at the end, uh, we've moved on rather quickly from step five to step six, which involves a five, a thirteen, and a fourteen. A thirteen and fourteen are the wheels. This is sprue B. Let's get the correct sprue. Uh, A13 and 14, which I shouldn't need. Ah, yes, look, because there is a circle, I could literally just twist them off like that. That's unfortunate. It will. It probably won't be green for quite a while because, um, you know, when I get the foam, I don't want to, you know, sort of landscape, finish, then start landscaping somewhere else and green it up. I sort of want to try and get... I'm, I'm going to work in sections, but because it's been so long since, you know, I don't want to get it run away with myself, so to speak, with... With landscaping, I want to get all the landscaping done all over the layout and then move on to getting the greenery and stuff in. So I'm going to landscape all the way across the layout because, you know, if I do one section and finish one section, then I might start another section and think, ah, actually, it'd be nice in this section if I could have the hill leading into that hill or something like that, if you know what I mean. So with landscaping, I'm going to create all the hills and all the terrain um, before I start adding the static grass and stuff. But... When I get add into the static grass and once I know roughly what's there through doing the hills and the landscaping, 
then I'll work in sections. So I'll do all the landscaping, then I'll start right at the back of the boards over in the coal yard, get all the scenery done uh, in there, or most of it anyway, you know, I might omit stuff like cars, but I'll do the main greenery and stuff over there. Then I'll go all the way and do right to the back of the sawmill, because I have to climb, actually climb on my boards to get to the back of the layout, um, I have to do it in sections, so I can't really sort of do this uh, and then go onto the sawmill, because I'll just end up crushing all this with my knees, the boards here. So I'm going to landscape all of it, then I'm going to do the back of the board, so the sawmill and the coal siding. So landscape, finish the scenery on the sawmill and coal siding, probably finish the scenery on the station, and then probably do the big nice country houses on the mainline section, which is where the laptop is here. So that is what I intend to do. That is the plan O action. Which, uh, yeah, I am, I am very much looking forward to. These wheels are identical, so flat part goes upwards to presumably stop it skidding down the surface. So yeah, I'll get all the landscaping done, and then I'll get scenery. Well, I'll say scenery, landscaping is scenery, but I'll get all the greenery and in sections after that. Right, are these actually stuck or am I just going to knock these? No, that's stuck enough. Stuck enough to drop a wheel onto and leave alone for a couple of minutes. I actually got that on first try. Mm -hmm. Lovely. I'll get the other one on. Whoa, careful, careful now. Jaden says, any waterfalls? Uh, no, unfortunately not. Uh, I don't, I'm, I've not really got the space, to be quite frankly honest with you, to do that. Uh, and I haven't really got space for any bridges either, unless it was like a pedestrian bridge. But in terms of bridges for trains, no, because I've already, well, you know this, Jaden, but for the benefit of other people, uh, I've got no elevated track. I wasn't getting bogged down and not doing all that. So rather than elevating the track to create height, I am simply going to elevate the uh, details and landscape around the track to give a sense of depth rather than sort of track around scenery. I'm doing scenery in the hills around the track, if that makes sense, which I think it does. Uh, yeah, because uh, if I start making, you know, especially on my layout, I have my straights aren't actually that long, so, you know, if I started mucking about with inclined track and such, none of my locos would be able to climb hills, and then I'd have to buy really expensive ones, or put traction tires on all of them, or use the DCC Concepts Magnet System, and all that's just more cost and faff and bother. Uh, and especially trying to mount point motors as well, and so it all just gets when you sort, when you elevate your track. Or at least in my space when you elevate your track, it all just gets a bit too much. So that's why I am not elevating my track. Look! We have wheels! Look at that! That's brilliant! We've got some wheels on the spit. Are they going to touch the tower if I do that? No. Right! Step 7. A16. Uh, um... I really could do with those snips. Um, let's just tip it upside down. Uh, but yeah, p pedestrian bridges could be a possibility, although I'm not completely sure yet. Ponds, I'll probably add. I'll probably might add some in the mainline section, although I'm not really sure. Uh, but bridges for trains and waterfalls that you know, waterfalls are not going to happen. I just haven't got the room or the height or the space to make those happen. That's just gone on the floor. Um, but uh, ponds, yes, certainly that is quite a good idea. Uh, and yes, that probably will happen somewhere. Excuse the shot of the hair. I just dropped that on the floor. And excuse the flailing hoodie ties as well. Right, this is the, I presume, radar antenna. Well, it goes on the top and sticks up, so I presume this is like the radar antenna or something. And, it says in the description we'll pr I hope to get onto painting, or something like painting will be happening very shortly. Well, I think it actually will be, because after this step, step 7 is the final step, I believe. So, you know, we, we're really not all that far away now from painting. Oh my god, where the hell have I just put that?
Where have I just put that? No. Oh, it's there. I found it. It just got... Yeah, blue sprue parts on a blue towel don't work very well. No, it still ain't cleaned that up very well, has it? I, I really need some... Let's not ping this across the room. I've learnt that once already. Let's cut down. So if it comes out, it's just going to... Uh, if it comes out of my hands, it's just going to go on the towel. Still a bit on there. Anything. Uh, I'm going till about nine tonight, everyone, by the way, I should say. Unless I get really invested with painting, which, let's face it, I probably will do, and then I'll go on longer. Uh, mm, I may have blocked the hole for the antenna up with glue. I have blocked the hole for the antenna up with glue. So, if I get... Oh. I was about to say, I'll get my rotary tool, a very fine drill bit, and drill that out, but I've just realised my granddad's borrowing my rotary tool, which is unusual, because I normally borrow tools from him. However, if I am not mistaken, I have some very small drill bits in here. In here? In here. Uh, will I have a car park? Probably, although I have absolutely no clue where I can fit one in at the moment. Maybe? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm going to have to try and work one in somewhere. I'm not quite sure where yet. There will be cars, certainly, but as for a car park, I don't really know where I can put one yet. But I may make a video asking for viewer suggestions on what would work well in my layout. I've got a very fine drill bit in. I'm just trying to stab my way through with glue. I've got the drill downstairs, but I really don't want to start drilling and stuff. I wonder if I can just poke through it with some tweezers. Whoops. Probably slightly too big, that's all anyway. Do you like Hornby Intercity? Yes, I currently have a Hornby Virgin HST, uh, but at some point, I am rather hoping to sell that, sell my Virgin coaches as well. Uh, possibly, because I'm wanting to change to a... I've got a Hornby uh, Virgin set at the moment, but I'm, I rather want to do East Coast, and sort of possibly, because I haven't got the money to buy an East Coast set, uh, possibly relivery one of the current Hornby HST power cars that I've got into uh, Virgin East Coast, rather than just regular Virgin. That's what I'm planning to do. So, yeah. I'll keep the power cars, I should say. Sorry, I'm not selling the power cars, but I do need to sell my Virgin Coaches. I have four of them. Two short ones that Hornby made, uh, I believe, so they go around tyre track. And then I have two of the longer ones. I've got two Mark IIs and two Mark Threes. Uh, so I've just poked the tweezers uh, into this little hole there. Oops. No, oh, that's they've set. That's not going to knock them. So I've just poked the tweezers into that hole uh, just to get rid of the glue that was in there. And now within any look, the beacon should drop in. Well, it's not quite dropped in, but good enough. Yeah. Maybe not quite good enough. I think that needs to push in deeper. It's just ram the tweezers in there. That should be better now. Also, because the tweezers are tapered, it does make it does enlarge it slightly as well. Oh, actually, I might be able to get the drill bit in now. Where's the... Where have I just put the drill bits? Jaden said he'd be happy to do some sketches with me. Rough sketches, ideas, possible layout. Layout of the scenery so sketches. More than happy to help. Thank you. I shall certainly give you Anne Bell if I need a help. Uh, in City Hornby Class 30 in Hornby in City Class 47 in real life. Uh, I mean they're not my favourite livery of 47s. If you're on about the Hornby HST power car, uh, fair play to them. Advertising. There is actual actually a model of that HST as well. 
Uh, not my favourite livery, but, you know, it's alright. Hey, look, we are actually drilling some material out here. Huh, that might that might actually work. I don't want to go too deep with this. You can get pin vi are they called pin vices where you like very, very small chucks um, with like a, a thing you rotate by hand to sort of drill by hand. I believe they use it in well in model trains when they want to do stuff like drill out very small holes here to fit in LEDs, which I may do at some point to be honest, but we'll see. Uh, especially because these are actual real lenses, you can see through those when you take the body off. They're not just moulded plastic, they do go straight through, so... Yeah, at some point it could be a good project to do. Pete's Transport, I've just... Sorry, I've just missed that comment. It says, park your rolls in there, Jaden. Fair enough. Yes! That, w ah, that little bit of drilling helped, look. See, I've enlarged that hole, got rid of the glue problem. Well, got rid of the problem that the glue was blocking the hole. And now that little radar antenna... I keep calling it a radar antenna. I presume Jaden will be able to confirm or deny that. But this little radar antenna... It's sat in beautifully. And it's sat in straight, too. That's not uh, something that you see every day. Well, especially when I'm building stuff, you've, everything normally ends up completely like a dog's hind leg. But uh, are the wheels glued in now? Because I can carry on painting them, if so. What colour are the wheels? Black. What colour is the centre of the wheels? That horrible grey colour. Okay. Mm, I'm just going to dribble some more glue down there. Cause... Oh, I've just knocked that. You wally. Your best loco is clan line. Don't have a clan line. Right, I'm just going to dribble some more glue down where the wheels are, because I don't think I put enough on, and I want them not to come loose. I'm going to dribble some more down there. Because you can never have too much glue. Well, you can, but... I need to match these up to the picture again. Oh, I've just knocked the little antenna. Oh, I've just realised that the, the things at the back are a bit wonky. thought I'd lined them up straight. Oh, it doesn't look so bad from the back, but from the front, the back, the tail looks quite wonky. Oh, well. You can't really tell when it's flat like that. Yeah, look. The wings at the back are a bit off kilter. On the back it looks fine, but... Oh, well. You need sheep, certainly. I'm going to need some form of life other than people. So apparently they should be 80, 60 degrees, should the wheels to the floor. Oh, I'll keep knocking this. Come on, stay straight. Right, making sure they aren't going to whack on anything. That now needs to dry. So, what can we do for five, ten minutes to entertain ourselves? Um, do you know what? I am going to revive the next pot of paint because oh, I did watch one tutorial video on this and it suggested using the lightest colour, which is this horrible sick bogey green <laughs> colour, uh, it suggested using the lightest colour as a base, as sort of like an undercoat, which I think is an excellent idea. So therefore I am going to use this light green colour as an undercoat. So, carburetor cleaner in there, let me get my mashy stirry stick in. Try and get some colour to come out of this. If it doesn't want to sort of become paint as well as the black has done, then I shan't bother. But... I do want to try and give it a primer colour. 
I know Timber Valley was quite often in the streams. Um, I think is it a Halford's Grey Primer he uses? But I don't have any primer. I've got some bright green spray paint outside, but I'm not sure that'll be much use. No, yeah, I'm just checking out not to that. I think I've just knocked to the body. Uh, this paint is actually dissolving a lot better than the black stuff. This may actually completely dissolve. How's the black? The black stuff looks as about as horrible as it normally does. But uh, this was actually becoming paint then. Yeah, look at that. The black must be slightly more viscous, so I don't know, dense than this stuff. But that looks actually, yeah, that's becoming paint. Is this look? It's not just sort of some carburetory coloured juice. <laughs> Oh, it's almost paint, is that? I can just not pick the lumps up on the paintbrush. So, 56 minutes in, we're painting. Jaden says, don't get deer, they run across your track and damage the models. Well, I haven't actually, I'm not going to have that much countryside space on this layout. I'm going to try and make the main line look as green as possible, but... Oh, I've just realised I ain't cleaned this brush, have I? You wally. Where's the Terps? Not the Terps, the, uh, the White Spirit. Primer is a good thing to have. Yes, I shall have to get some. So I, I have been through Metcalf's uh, website and picked out a load of really nice card kits that that, pick, that would fit perfectly on the layouts. I got them saved in a folder as well. The bristles aren't coming back to the usual orange colour. Moderately concerning. Pete, Pete wins the top joker of the month award. Oh dear. <laughs> Certainly. Oh dear. No, I think that brush will be clean enough. I don't think this brush has ever actually had paint on it. I mean, it had glue on on Tuesday. Because, um... It had glue on on Tuesday because I was... Uh, well, this is what all that is. All this in here is coal from uh, loading up that wagon full of coal, but. Um, yeah, it's not actually a paint on it at all. Right, undercoat of number 90 Umbral Grey paint. Well, it's sort of greyy, greeny, khaki, horrible colour, so. Ugh. Well, that's not going very well. The paintbrush still isn't uh, particularly clean, is it? Look at, look at all that. Great. It's gone black. Well, that's better. It's not painting it. Oh, I think we're going to need some more carburetor cleaner to spray in there. It's not doing the greatest. It's not. I thought it had gone like a paint consistency, but apparently it hasn't. Fortunately, the green and the brown we need to paint the body are in these better paint pots and they haven't completely gone solid, so... We can paint it fine with that, it's just all the little tiny black parts you can't paint very well. Right, is that better? Oh, I've just knocked it. Oh, you wally. There we go. The paints, this colour paints definitely isn't doing as good as I thought it did in the video I've seen. It's not, this colour paint isn't covering the blue at all. So how on earth are we going to paint underneath the Spitfire? I mean, then again, it is going to be sat down like this. It is going to be sat down on the floor, so you probably wouldn't see underneath. I could paint it brown, but... I don't know, you're not going to see underneath, so it might not actually matter if the underside stays blue, but yeah, this is sort of just creating bogey green skid marks underneath on the wing, which I admit does not look great. 
Um, so I may wipe this paint off. Yeah, look, that's not painting. That's still obviously blue. It's just got skid marks of green, horrible paint. Right, we'll forget about that colour paint. And I'll probably just have to leave the underside unpainted. Or paint the underside black. Because, yeah, it's not gone. That paint is a horrific colour. And it's not painting. It's just sort of smearing. So, yeah. Um, right, now I've got to somehow... Oh, hang on, I'll just I best actually check I've done all the instructions. Let's just check. Yeah, okay, we have actually got to the end of the instructions. So now we need to paint it, probably wait for it to dry, do another coat in some other stream, and then we need to do the dreaded water slide decals, decals, however you want to say it, I don't really care. I say decals, which is probably wrong, but who cares. Best Tornby carriage? Don't really have any. Oh, I've got the virgin ones. Uh, I can't say I have a, an opinion on Hornby carriages. I know some of them are decent, the X Airfix ones. Timber Valley said that the other day. Right, let's just check we're not going to get skid marks all over the body. Yeah, we're not. Right, Jaden, this is where I may need some... Um, this is where I may need some... I mean, I've got the picture on the box of what it should look like, but shout at me if I do anything obviously wrong. So I'm going to try and follow the general scheme, uh, the painting sort of scheme that's on there. There we go, look. Although it has gone grey, that just wants remixing in uh, with the... As the brown stick. Oh, that's the green stick. Let's make this the brown stick. So although that's sort of gone a horrible... God knows what colour that can be described as. When you mix it in... It, uh, it goes brown perfectly fine. Pete says, Comment of the night, bogey green <laughs> skid marks. Well, this isn't exactly a great colour, is it? Jaden says, George, stop. You've already done something wrong. What? Is it lose the back wheel? Is it just about everything I've done? Because I wouldn't be surprised. And he says, just kidding. Well, you're not you're not wrong, because I have done basically everything wrong. I think if I had a fat like a a club of kit builders around me now, I think they'd have all just passed passed out from art attacks because of how horrific my painting and just general model building abilities are. Right. Oh, I said I was gonna wipe that paint. You see, I can't even remember what I said I'm gonna do fifteen seconds after I've said it. What I said I was going to do is try and wipe some of this paint off. Oh, it's already dried. Oh, well, never mind. This is permanently on there now, anyway. Oh, right. So, the painting scheme looks like that. So, I guess you're not supposed to masking tape it. I guess you're supposed to just roughly follow the lines. So, that's what I'm going to do. That's what I saw the bloke in the tutorial video on how to paint doing. So, I'm just gently going to try and sort of follow the rough outline of the paint. Uh, and try not to massively cock it up, to be honest with you. So that starts at about that join there and just sort of down there. So. Ooh. Hmm. I don't know, I think that's actually mine to work. Is it going to be abandoned or in service? I've already said it's going to be abandoned and I'm going to put the, uh, like a grey fabric. Because uh, I didn't want to sort of, you know, I, I'm, I've took the canopy off canopy cover off since last time i'm going to put some gray fabric over there um and i am going to um make it uh disused so i'm going to put a, a gray fabric canopy cover over the canopy and make it look disused uh, i've just noticed painting instructions it has actually got a um a specific uh well model type could you say it says Supermarine Spitfire Mark 1A, number 610, 610, number 610 Squadron, number 13 Group, RAF Biggin Hill, July 1940. And the date on this box is Hornby Copyright 2010, uh, Decal Schemes and Pack Design 2010. So this is 13 years old, at least. Um, yeah, so this paint, no wonder why it's all coagulated. It's bloody 13 year old. Deary me. Oh, well. 
I'm just following what's on the pack, Jaden. I'm not going to worry if I cock up too much because I've already massively cocked up several times tonight, haven't I? So there's a big bubble there. But uh, yeah, I'm just going to try and roughly follow what's on the diagram. So that wants to end about there. All I've seen basically online basically was just do a little uh, a wiggle like that. Unless you want to add D-Day stripes, I dare not, to be honest. Perhaps this start, that starts roughly a da uh, down there, and then we'll sort of was. Yep. Wow, that was accidentally almost perfect. Look! It's working! <laughs> you know, I've secretly been dreading painting, but secretly I feel like it's going to be the most, my favourite part to do. Uh, on the side of the cab, that sort of just goes skid mark brown till about there. So let's just think about this before I commit to paint. So that's just below that notch there. Oh, you can't actually see what the hell I'm doing. Here we go. You can't know, you still can't see. You know what's on it. Let's just put that on the back on. My king has a Hornby 125 carriage on the left with a 47 on it. Nice. So this brown mark sort of goes over down the side of the cab yes it comes up and round the side of the cab so if i do sort of no oh, that wasn't very good if i do sort of that down that side and then sort of just try and join that line up around this side from here that'll probably be all right so that sort of goes down a bit up a little bit down there that wasn't quite as good as i hoped it would be let's just try that again Yeah, that's better now. And then if I just try and join those two lines up with some sort of finesse. Yeah, there we go. It's coming together. So let's just pay attention to which of these bits should be brown. So I always want painting brown here. Do I reposition the camera so you can see what I'm doing better? Where will it go, though? That is the question. Uh... Yeah, my hand's sort of in the way here, isn't it? Can can you see on the other camera any better? Yeah, you can sort of. There we go. Yeah, yeah you can see what I'm doing here. It's not very... zoom. I don't really want to zoom it in because then all the quality will be lost, but I don't think you can see what I'm doing enough here. My painting skills have probably been ridiculed right now. I'm just sort of wiggling backwards and forwards. You have a good watch on your arm? Well, it's a Seconda. It was 23 quid. It's nothing fancy. I am not a watch person. My brother is. And I'm sure if he even heard me mention the word watch, he would be straight up the loft talking to all of you about it. But it's a Seconda. Uh, oh, wrong Flipping camera. There you go. Seconda. 23 quid off Amazon. I, I am probably putting this paint on far too thickly, but you know what? It's been painted, so I'm not all that bothered. Stay inside the lines, George. It's like when you were a three-year-old doing colour by number. I was never very good at colour by number. Can you tell? Did a blob there, probably glue. Oh no, that's that's a moulded blob. Never mind. I'm a watch person too. I'll talk to him. Well, I'm sure he'd spout at you for hours. Right, I'm going to try and focus on doing the wings in brown first before I get onto the fuselage. So obviously we'll need to hold it. I really should have brought a hairdryer up here, shouldn't I? Mind you, is running a hairdryer in a loft really a great idea? Probably not. Pete says we can see alright, okay. Now if I tilt it like this, oh no then I can't see. I think you get the general gist of what I'm doing. Does your brother like trains? No, hates them. Well he doesn't hate them, he's been train spotting with me several times. Uh, I've already got brown where the green should be. I think the green's darker than the brown one. Is it? Yeah, it looks like it, so... Might not have so much of a problem. Where does the brown end? Let's see. 
roughly there. So if I just try and join that up as best I can. Right here. Yeah, he's not a trained person. He's football person, I guess you'd say. Um, so yeah. He has been trained. He likes to come up and see what I'm doing every now and then. And he says he wants to help me do some scenery because he's actually better at uh, scenery and stuff like that than I am. So yeah, he's you know he comes train spotting every now and then and such, but no, he doesn't. It's mainly green around the cab. The cab, well, the cockpit, so I'll just, well, where I've painted to already is fine. The antenna stick is brown. I'll paint that after it's glued a little bit longer. So I'll just get to the base of it and then probably stop. I'm no Bob Ross, but I'd say this isn't looking absolutely shocking. I may just paint the underneath black, to be honest, just so if on the off chance you'd like working down at eye level, you're not going to see. Unless I can get that other paint to work, but honestly, I don't think it will. This paint's quite doing a good job at covering up all my uh, glue cracks in the body as well. Bring my, excuse me, sins up quite well. This should be dry enough now. There we go. Oh, look at that. Slightly too much paint. Let's tidy that area up there. Well, stone me, that's not terrible. Now we need to get the camo, which I'm going to... It's not we could really do with a photo around the other side. You have a cool work setup, thank you. Not a bad little workbench. Workbench on wheel, there's a shelf you can see. I've just kicked there. You can see the yellow multimeter thing I've just kicked moving down there. That little shelf, you know, I can wheel it in and out. I've got tools, you know, little non-stick. A uh, little non-stick heat-resistant mat for the all the soldering antics. So yeah, I have actually. So, uh, it ain't too bad. Mm, that line was a bit stark. Let's mark that up a little bit more. Let's give it a bit of a wiggle. There we go. Mind you, when I paint green up to it, I'll be able to uh, add some more definition, you might say. Uh, so this brown sort of comes from, well, all the way around the front near the exhaust, sort of skids off down there and then comes down the side to there. That's good. Uh, then that line over here sort of skids, comes down there and sort of goes bloop, like that. And this sort of comes Like that. Then we have a little bit in here. Oh no, we run out of paint then. Oh no. There we go. And then we have another little bit that starts and just sort of goes. Bleh. Uh, let's try that again, yeah, that's better. That goes across there. They probably are a bit thick, these brown bits, but I'm not too bothered. Uh, and then it sort of just comes up. Yeah, that'll do. That will do. Ah, oh, you may be able to see what I'm doing now. Let's try the other camera. Yeah, you sort of can. If I paint from this side, you'll be able to see what I'm doing. What time are we on? Ten to nine. Ten to 
Yes, 10 to 9, not 10 to 10. 10 to 9. So with any luck, tomorrow this Spitfire may be finished. There won't be a stream on Sunday because I'm busy. Um, some people are coming, family's coming over for Sunday dinner. And also I'm finally with my granddad going to put the jigsaw up. Uh, that I've mentioned before, so that's going to go up on Sunday. So I don't want to be sort of, you know, chipping off to do streams when they're around having tea with us, and also we're spending literally probably most of the day putting the jigsaw up. So, yeah. I'm going to avoid repainting these brown bits, but I'm sure I'm going to have to. So. Right, that's that little section done. Now this section. Spitfires, well at least this one, I'm pretty sure Jaden will tell you, had the Rolls-Royce Merlin engine in. A V12. Indeed it does. Yes, I've remembered something about planes. Thank you, Jaden. Well, I am actually managing to stay with the moving the lines here. This paint's probably not going to dry in time for a second coat or enough to do the green. Because if I do, if I accidentally strain to the brown, which is inevitable. Um, when I'm painting with the green, then they're just going to sort of mix and become a horrible bogey skid mark green brown colour. So. Then the later one use the Griffon. I've heard of it before. Don't know where. Well, I don't know where. Yes, exactly. Where from? This plane, obviously, but uh, I have heard of that name before. I did the name it Merlin, Jaden. Is it after somebody's last name or something? Right, let's see if we can get right up to these exhausts. Oh, that's worked perfectly, is that? Yeah, I got right down the side of the exhaust then and covered up all the black spill marks I've made. <laughs> I am very pleased. Right, now I think there's just a very small bit of green around the front. So if I try and just... Oh yeah, look at how close I've got to the exhaust with that brown there. That's brilliant. This one uses a three ejector exhaust increased strut. Yes, you said this one has the ones facing backwards. Uh, the exhaust facing backwards, which it does three exhausts on each side. So if it's a V12, that must mean... Oh, I've just put my finger in the brown paint. That were always going to happen, wouldn't it? So if it's, if it's got six exhausts, then that must mean that 12 divided by 6 is 2. So one exhaust, there must be an exhaust per... Um, I've just started reading a comment and forgot what I was saying. Um, if it's a V12 and there's six exhausts, then 12 divided by six, which means there's uh, an exhaust for every two cylinders. Must it not? Yeah, look at, look at how, how close I've managed to get to the exhausts there. That is simply marvellous. There's a big crack opened up there. Never mind. A blob, blob enough brown paint on it you won't be able to see. I'm gonna be facing this way anyway, so you won't see it. If you don't see the wheel, retrace your, re, retrace it. Well, it's not even a case of retracing my steps. It's sort of just pinged off. So it could have really pinged. It pinged off in that direction, but it's probably bounced around 15 million times before stopping. It sounded like it on the hard floor though. I'll have another short look after the stream, but it may just be a case I have to do a bodge job and hope nobody notices, which is sort of what I'm doing now, to be honest with you. Oops. 
jakaś ty szczebla, o wolę. Right, there's not much more of the fuselage I can really paint now, because I have to put my fingers somewhere to uh, hold it to paint, so... Uh, that's, the, that's the brown done, roughly. I'm annoyed I've just knocked this bit though, this bit's gone the light brown now, for whatever reason. Alright, it's probably because it's started to dry slightly. Oh, I'll just leave that alone now then. Well, it is not looking, dare I say it, too bad. Let's just compare, oops, let's not get paint all over my watch. There is the box. There is mine. Not terrible. Right. I'll precariously balance this on here now. Catch up on some comments. Jaden says it's 12 litre V12. Wow, that seems to be a thirsty bugger. Uh, one exhaust per two cylinders, six cylinders on either side, yes of course, facing diagonally outwards making a cross section of the V, hence V12. V12 is indeed 12 cylinders and V shapes as cross section, the number after is just the number of cylinders. Indeed it is. My dad's car, is it? My dad's car is a three cylinder, I think. An inline three though. I think they call them inline threes or flat threes. Uh, is it inline they call flat engines? Anyway, it's just a regular, well I say regular three cylinder, it'd be regular four cylinder really, wouldn't it? But You'd struggle to have a V3, would you not? Because you'd have two on one side and one on the other, and it'd just like check itself apart, would it not? Oh, the oiling pen has leaked slightly. Never mind. <clears throat> and there's a car alarm going off outside. Somebody must be getting robbed. Never mind. Thank you, Pete. It's uh, it's not bad, is it? I'm just going to. I'm not going to try and wait for the brown paint to dry. Uh, today, because that would just be foolish and stupid and ruining all my hard work, so I'm going to paint, repaint the exhausts, the top of the exhausts black, I think, redo the propeller, redo the wheels underneath, and um, leave it at that for today and come back tomorrow, paint the green, and uh, well, we might just be okay. Let's leave that open. Right, black paint if he hasn't completely gone to pot again. And there is the rotaries, which uh, I can't get my chair tucked in enough. It keeps sliding back. Uh, and which are the only thing altogether very cool though, yes. Right, let's try not get black paint where black paint doesn't want to be. So let's not finger mark all the paint again. Uh, do I try and do the exhaust? Yeah, I'll do the tops of the exhaust. Now I've got a finer paintbrush, it'll be a lot easier to do. Now I've actually got the paintbrush that can be the set. Oh yeah, they look miles better. I'm not going to bother about painting underneath because they've been painted black once. In fact, twice already. And you're not going to see them, so... Let's just get the exhaust done. Again. On top like that. On the side. Why does the instructions tell you to paint the stems of those, well, the landing gear stems? That's the box on the floor. Why does the instructions tell you to paint the landing gear stems one colour 
which is number 33, which is black. But then on the painting instructions, it's got them shown as that khaki greeny camo -y colour. That's odd. Excuse me while I get the box. It's fallen off the back of the window. I'll just show you this because I am sorry. I have followed the painting instructions in the instructions and they're different to the box. Look, the stems for the landing gear, the stems for the wheels there and there are in that, in that horrible green colour. There again, they're in the horrible green colour. But number 33, we are agreed that on the box, number 33 is black. In the instructions, where the wheel stems are there, that is obviously pointing to the wheel stem, the same as the bit there, just above the wheel, and the same as bit there in the body. Why, in the instructions, does it say paint that black, but on the box it says, oh no, actually, paint that the horrible green khaki colour. Anyway, I've painted them as black. The horrible green khaki colour is not working with us today, because it's just... I just can't get it to turn back into paint, even with my um, trusty carburetor spray. But th the instructions tell you to paint them black, but here it tells you to paint them khaki, or whatever this colour is, I don't even know. Number 90, Humbrol. Why? Why? Typical Holmby hobby is just lying to as usual. Anyway, it, the, the, the half-painted black, the, the paper instructions tell you to paint them black, so I'm going to paint them black, and I'm going to paint the wheels black as well, because, as I say, again, you're probably not going to even notice. George.exe stopped working. Yes, I did, because it's the wrong colour. It's two different colours on two different sheets of... or two different details. It's... Why? Why? The King447 is off. Okay, thank you very much for joining. Nice to see you. Thank you for... Joining and commenting. Do enjoy the rest of your Friday evening. Now this is going to be tricky. How the hell do I paint this? Oh, I've just dipped. I've just put my finger in the brown paint again. Okay, we'll touch that up after. Oh, in fact, actually, there is some brown paint on this stick. So if I just stick that in there, I may actually be able to paint it with a brown stick. So I don't really want to have to wash the paintbrush out. Of it, so. Cotton bud would probably work. As I say, I'm going to have to give the brown or a second a second coat, probably. Yeah, that's not done too bad up there. Ignore me painting that with a stick, but it's going to have to have a second coat anyway, just that some of the blue had started to show through, so I don't really want to have to paint that three times and the rest of it not. No, the propeller won't turn round now. Right, let's try and very carefully paint this propeller again. Right, let's keep one blade paint free so I can spin the prop with my finger. And then when that's when the props all painted again black, I'll paint the final um, prop blade black again. No, oh, we need to do the backs in the wheel, don't we? Oh, again, it's going to be facing forward, so it probably won't matter all that much. In fact, if I just put my oh, if I just put my finger on the end of the oh, that's it, and the schnips. Oh, I've just put my finger in the paint again. Oh, not to worry though. That hasn't actually hmm, that hasn't actually caused any problems. Oh well, that's rather fortunate. Right, let's just go around and make sure all this is black. Very careful not to dislodge anything. Oh, I haven't painted this bit yet, have I? Rain. 158 bit sound of it. Sound carries quite well to uh, where I am from the station. Right, let's do the backs of the prop blades now. It's like the precarious job, but we'll manage. 
Yeah, I really should have painted the prop before I glued it in, or rather glued the two halves of the fuselage together. But never mind. Stop flicking. Thank you, Pete and Jaden. I've just seen you both praising my, well, horrible painting skills. But yeah, for a first time attempt from a complete beginner, it's, uh, it doesn't look awful, which I'm surprised about. As I said, the paint is helping to cover the sins of my horrible glue jobs. Right, that is... Oh no, this blade hasn't been painted. Yes, because that's the one I was holding on to. That makes sense. Paint seriously dried already. It seems to have gone not as shiny on two of the blades already. <laughs> right! That doesn't look too bad! Uh, I've gone around the exhausts again, they look nice. Yeah, that's not looking too... Oh, I've slipped there slightly. Okay. Uh, I may just actually... Oh yes, I said I was going to do the underneath as well. So. Let me see if I can get the stick of brown paint and just cover that little black blob up that I seem to have missed. As I say, they are going to need a second coat, but if I can fix any mistakes that are going to show blue through now, that means it should only need one more extra coat, shouldn't it? That brown has sort of leaked its way into the exhaust now. Mm -hmm. And quickly solve that. Solved right, rather precariously. This now needs turning upside down, and I'm still going to, I can't really balance it. I'm just going to have to paint the things black. I may end up just painting the complete underneath. I'm going to persevere with that horrible khaki colour a little bit more, and if it don't work, I'll either just leave it blue or paint the whole underneath black. This black isn't doing very well. Let's put a bit more on. Oh, that's better. It just lost its viscosity slightly. Nothing too bad. Let's just nick that. In fact, all of that's going to be black, so it doesn't matter if I stray outside the lines. I just don't want to necessarily get it on the body. Oops, I've just stabbed the wing into the players. All of this is going to be black, I think. I suppose I could paint the sides of the inner, in, innards of the wheel a different colour, but I don't know what I'd paint them, because that green colour it says to paint them in, um, as we know, doesn't really work, so I'll have to think about that. And I still need to think about making a landing gear wheel for the back as well. Uh, so I'll have to think about how we're going to do that. Could leave it blue, but blue's not a very good metal colour, is it? For now, though, I'll just paint it all the same colour. I can always paint over it at a later date. This brush is actually a lot better than that red one. It's funny that, isn't it, when you use the proper brush that came with the set? Yeah, it's uh, a lot finer. Brilliant, actually. Right, oh, there's just a tiny bit on here I haven't, I haven't quite caught on this one. Maybe I should title my uh, next, um, because we're going to be doing painting for Deffin. I didn't know if I'd get onto painting today. I didn't know how long steps 5, 6 and 7 would take. But maybe I should name my next, well, my next, hopefully the final part of building this Spitfire. Maybe I should 
rename it because obviously we're having to fix this horrible paint. Maybe I should name my final installation of this Airfix build the Return of the Carburetta Cleaner because, as you know, this has been an absolute lifesaver in getting this black paint to work. I think that could be something that's quite amusing to do, don't you? I think that would be quite funny. Well, funny, but I think it would be funny. Right, that is the wheels painted black. I'm pleased to say I've not spilt paint everywhere. That sounds in bones. Anything else need painting black? No? No, just the propeller. Right. Not too bad. Oops. Oh, that was that little pip underneath. I just need to be careful. Now. Right. I'm just going to very quickly see if this that now that I've given that green horrible colour sick paint to have chance to work. I'm now just going to see if it will play ball. That paint was actually almost clean now. Fibers have come apart slightly, I'll just twist them back together. Right, has this horrible that is a disgusting colour. And I'll shield it so you can see it better. Yeah. That is a horrible colour. Does this colour now work better? Mm, I'd say no. Although, I don't know, is that is that dissolved better, or is it just me? Or may it, may it just want a sting of white spirit in it? Although that didn't work last time. Get a bit more of that in there. Can't do it any harm, can it? Uh, just, oh, it's ten past nine. I was about to say we've just gone past nine o'clock. We haven't just gone past nine o'clock, because it's ten past nine, but... Look at that, it almost like makes trails when you lift it up. Right, let's see how horribly this goes. If it doesn't work, I'll just leave it blue or paint it black. Is it going to work? I'm going to hazard a guess at no. Yeah, exactly, it doesn't work. I don't know, if I persevered and did loads of coats, it might. A bit stringy. Right, what about if I tip a little bit of white? Now that the carburetor cleaner has sort of started dissolving it, what happens if I tip a little bit of, there we go, white spirit into it? Does that help it along a little bit or no? Because you see, at one point, it did actually managed to paint this stick half decently, but... No, we'll have to see. We'll give this a stir, and if it's not going to work tonight, then I'll... Well, I'll probably just forget it, to be honest with you. Gonna try and agitate this pot a little bit. Oh, that was almost paint, then I think. Still a little bit blobby. Right, let's try that again. I reckon that's not going to work. Bit more, perhaps? I've got plenty of it. Hmm. 
<laughs> That's just cleaning the end of the brush now. It almost seems to get worse when I add white spirit. Why is that? Right, I'm going to give this another sort of minute of stirring. If it doesn't get any better, we'll call it a day. I'll call it a night. Hmm. Yeah, it's not great. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'd rather not leave the underneath unpainted, but what 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 can you do? Let's try some more. This is a final resort. Just doesn't seem to want to to work as well as the black paint, of which I shall remember to put the lid on. So it'll just go even worse. There we go. Oh, it's gone all over my fingers. <laughs> Like I've been down pit. Oh, it's going to love me arm now as well. Right. Has it worked? I'm going to guess not. It almost seems like it's there. I wonder if I had something like, if I could get some IPA or some universal fins. My granddad's got some of them actually, that might work, but it just doesn't seem to want to work all that well, does this? Right, last test underneath. Fingers are relatively clean. Is it going to work? So no. Oh look, it's just too sticky. I might just end up painting the underneath brown, actually. I might do that. Do I just paint the underneath brown? Jaden, if you're still watching, do you approve if I paint the underneath brown? Just so it's not blue. Brown or black or green, what do you think would be best for the underneath? If you're still watching. Uh, what colour do you think's best? Or do you think I should just leave it as blue? I mean, it's just sort of painting, but... <laughs> horribly. I mean, it is painting, but not well at all. Oh, I've just... Oh, no, I haven't done the other bit. Now, you can't even see on camera because the colour's so close. You know what, tomorrow, I may just... Ooh, that's horrible. I may just persevere with this. Yeah, that's come out quite thick, but if I can spread it about... It won't be too bad, would it? Painting the fine areas might be difficult.
Uh, it's working slightly, but uh, it's a little bit furry. If I, uh, oh, suddenly had a bit there that were all right. It's very, it's almost like furry, very stringy and horrible. I don't know. I feel like if I just persevered a bit, it might be all right. And again, it might just stay all horrible like this. Yeah, it don't look... It's very furry and horrible there, look into it. It's not smooth. Right, I think I'm going to leave it there. It evidently is not ver... I've just put the wrong lid on that. That should have been for the black paint. Never mind, it's knackered anyway. Right, I think I am going to leave it there. I'll decide what I'm going to do. I may paint the underneath brown or black or green. I feel like green might be best because it's going to be on a green surface. But you know what? I'll decide that tomorrow. So if I can just wipe... Oh, I'll put the, the brown paint. Oh, it's dry now anyway. If I can just wipe some of this off. Then I'll come back and paint it. Oh, I've got some sandpaper. Where's the sandpaper? I can just get this off and then I'll paint it green tomorrow, I think. I think that'll be the best thing to do, don't you? I'll try and get it a little bit smoother and then I'll paint this green tomorrow because uh, it's going to be against a green background. Well, it's going to be on a green floor, isn't it? On green grass. Uh, yeah, there isn't actually that much green. If you look on the top, if you ask me, that's mostly brown. So I think I might actually paint the underneath green, as I say. I think that would make the most sense. This colour is between brown and green anyway, so you can't really tell what's going on. But Well, you can't really tell what colours it's closer to, really. But I think I'll paint it green. It won't look too bad then, I don't think. Oh, I've just broke that. No, 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 I haven't. That's fine. Um, right. I'm just trying to get the sort of furriness of this off because it is, as I say, horrible paint. I'm sure it will fine when it were new 13 years ago, but at the moment it's um, sort of a bit loose and dangly. Right, I think that's as best as I can do. So, that is going to be the end of today's stream, everyone. Thank you very much indeed for watching. Uh, we really haven't done too bad today. We have a Spitfire, uh, which I'm going to paint underneath green tomorrow. As I say, we've done the wheels, we've done the propeller, we've redone the exhaust, we've finished off the last bits of detail, and we've started doing the camo colour. So, next thing to do tomorrow will be get all that um, painted brown, uh, probably do a second coat, and then just gently try and, you know, keep within the lines and do all the green and do the underneath green as well. So, thank you very much indeed for watching. It's been great to have you all here tonight. Thank you for spending your Saturday evening and night with me. We will be back tomorrow uh, at the roughly the same time I would hazard a guess at. Uh, again, I'll schedule it and let you know and all that sort of stuff. Uh, I'll let you know what time I'm planning on starting tomorrow. Thank you very much indeed for watching, and I am very much looking forward to coming back to uh, probably part four, which I hope um, will be the final part uh, of the stream. That should be uh, a nice little uh, finish off, and we can I'll probably get the webcam and do a little techie around the model and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, it's not looking so bad, is it? It really isn't for my first kit. As I say, this paint along the top, that was all a massive crack down there, but you can barely see it now, which I'm... Uh, which you're pleased about. So yeah, the connectors have come um, for the wagon, as I mentioned earlier, so we can finally, uh, the logo's in here, is it not? We can uh, actually start thinking about connecting the uh, pickup wagon and redoing the pickups for this. Uh, I may film that uh, during tomorrow, but as I say, I'm off to be in queue to get some foam tomorrow. 
Um, so I will uh, try and maybe film that video tomorrow now I've got all the bits. Uh, but I will need some time to test to see if um, poly cement will actually stick or just at least retain uh, copper wire to plastic. So we'll have to see how that goes. But I may be filming that video tomorrow. It probably won't be out tomorrow. I'll have to take time to edit it and all that. But we'll see how it goes. But anyway, this has been the Airfix Spitfire build part three. Thank you very much indeed for watching and hope to see you all again here tomorrow for part four, the final part of building the Spitfire. Just a quick thank you to everyone who's been in the chat. So that is Pete from Pete's Transport and More, Jaden from On the Main Line, McKing447, thank you for joining me. We've had Lee from Anfield Road Layout and the Loft, and we've had Evan Terry as well. Thank you very much for watching and hope to see you all tomorrow. Good night. Thank you.